acres? Right. Okay. How many acres? <coughs> How many benavides? How many acres for all of those parts? Each of those parts. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. We can get back to you on that. All right. Total. Awesome. Thank you. Total four. Thank you, Mike. Um, so next up we have uh, Richard Dagnes, so I'll just inform as part of the group that we have coming up, Laura Matthews and Robert Bradley. So if you all want to go ahead and uh, take the mic as a group. Uh, they're from District 10, they'll be speaking on McAllister Park improvements. Uh, after that group we'll have uh, Silva Dinatech and then David Grimaldi. So that 976 acres is not all of it to the public. And we have visitors from all over the United States coming to this park and surrounding counties on a weekly basis. It is at capacity for use. We want to complete the projects from the 2012 bond fund. I want to point out that the last large uh, amount of improvements that McAllister Park had was in 2003, where we received $1.6 million. 2007, we only had $100,000. This last time, 2012, we had $1 million, and we only received um, a parking lot that has only 28 spaces and does have some solar lights, and then also renovation of a paved path. So we're very, that those two projects were very much over budget and that's why we're very short on what we have. Pavilion 2 is a major uh, pavilion where we have a lot of large events. We really need to have that renovated, have it larger, and then also a driveway for events so they can unload. This pavilion, I don't know exactly when it was created, but probably in the late 70s or early 80s. You can see the roof support system is literally deteriorating and also there are holes in the roof so it needs a total renovation, tear down and start over and if you could make it probably twice as large that would be very nice. And also bicycle skills park, this is just one example of, of something that you could have. And then this is something called a pump track, as you can note from this. You see the tennis courts in the back, it kind of gives you an idea of the <coughs> footprint of this. And also it's for different type bikes. I suspect something like this in an open area near the practice fields could possibly be on no more than two acres. To put that in perspective, our current dog park is 1.5 acres. Uh, we're in desperate need of trail signs. At one time in 2003, there were approximately 45 signs on a marked 10 k course and a 5 k course. There are very few left. I doubt there's five left in the park. They were made of wood and just normal paint. They have deteriorated. People get lost on a regular daily basis there, so this is an urgent matter. Uh, the dog park, you could extend the dog park into the trees, leaving all the all the trees there, take out some of the understory, you can probably increase that by about a half acre. And uh, there's not very many shade structures for the for the people and then for the animals. <coughs> but it's, it's very, very popular. Uh, along B Tree, which is the road is closed off and it's just a forgotten area of the park. It's literally deteriorating deteriorating minute by minute. It, it's like it really, really needs to be uh, renovated as soon as possible. It's a beautiful area. We had a lot of heritage oak trees. Some of the oak trees in there are 200 years old. And so all of those need, need uh, attention. We need to have the forester come out and look at all those and see what can be done. Uh, the picnic tables are long deteriorated. 
and uh, there's a very old restroom there. It needs to either be removed or replaced. It is working, but because we don't have the area open, it has just deteriorated. And you can see how it's, this whole area is never mowed, so it does need a lot of a lot of attention to, to to be beautiful again. This is where we do have our deer waterfall, so it is a sensitive area for wildlife, so we have to be mindful of that when doing any maintenance there. Um, also, the park only has seven waterfowls for all these huge, huge number of users. So this is an urgent matter also. Uh, we used to have quite a few more, but over the years, um, the, the, they were PVC pipes going to the water fountain that's just deteriorated. So we would also like to see some uh, filtered water stations at all the pavilions. Can I? I'm about to cut you off there. Okay. All right. I will get that power that PowerPoint information to to everyone to see. I'll send you a, a PDF and get that to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and if you guys are looking for a bicycles uh, bicycle skills park in the meantime, feel free to ride down Congress Street downtown. <laughs> uh, have a scar to prove it. Um, so next up we have Sylvia Benetech, David Ramon, and Melo Campos, and I believe they're speaking as a group. Sylvia, is that correct? You guys are speaking as a group? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, they're, in, they're from a District 3, they'll be speaking on Mia Coronado Park. After Sylvia, we'll have uh, Beck McNeil and then Shannon here. Hi, my name is Sylvia Benetech from District 3. I'm representing the Devil on Alpha. I'm just going to reintroduce the meeting. One, Mia Coronado, and I'm making money from 2012 one. And two, our teens are asking for a skate park. They skate their way down the street or to our park. They skate on our side, our sidewalks and outside the basketball court, which they tell them not to get out the basketball court. You can't do that. So we ask them to stop, and they apologize and ask, well, why can't we have a skate park ourselves? So here I am. <laughs> so on spring, our spring and summers are really hot. We're also requesting a splash park for our kids. Via Corona has 14 plus acres, so there's plenty of room. Our gym sprung a leak, and no, that's not our splash pad. <laughs> but it needs to be packed up, and also there's competitive sports in our gym. They come from all over, the boys' room only has one bathroom. Please give Via Corona money to be able to have these, their skate and splash parts. Remember, they received nothing in 2012 pounds. Any kids in our area, there's father, the champion owners, and Mitch and the Lalo, they all come and are utilizing our parks so they do not. We live in an area where crime is going down, keeping these kids active <coughs> and what they enjoy and will help our community <coughs> to help these kids out. Thank you. They have some Thank you. Um, my name is Daniel Campos. Um, and I'm speaking on for a vehicle now. Like that would that would be cool. Like if we did have that splash, that splash, that splash pad there because we do have a lot of acres there. And it would be nice because you know, we play basketball there and like like it gets kind of hard to play ball. Like you know, I wouldn't mind like you know going under some splash pad. You know, like, like, like that, that's cool. I like that. Um, hello, my name is David Obergon, District 3, representing the Vita Cornell Park. I myself was a skater, and it would really be a good benefit for us, us youth, to have a skate park. Because we had to go out of our community to another skate park. And it's very dangerous on the highway, on the expressway. And I just really, really would be good for us, it would keep us out of trouble too. So I just want to say thank y'all for it. You guys have a nice night. <laughs> So committee members, uh, Via Coronado is part of the staff recommendations. And then back to the previous question uh, on the District 5 Parks package. So the combination of Benavides, uh, Collins Garden, Kennedy, and the Dowry Parks is 63 acres combined. Uh, 
so next up we have Becca McNeil, uh, District 1. She'll be speaking on Dignity Park. Uh, after Becca will be Shannon Perry and then uh, Larry Clark. Shannon Perry and Larry Clark. So I'm just glad to hear a lot of questions uh, asked about leverage. So just to give you a bit of an oversight again, uh, there was a master plan for Hemisphere that was developed between 2009 and 2012, approved by City Council in 2012, and it created a series of uh, a hierarchy of parks. The first park is Yonaguana Garden, that's in our southwest zone. Yonaguana Garden opened in October of 2015, and it measures 4.1 acres. Phase two is Civic Park, uh, and that's the park that we're here to talk about today. Phase three that will be developed at a later time is Tower Park. Uh, Civic Park is nine acres, Tower Park is, is almost six acres. When we look through the, uh, the bond guiding principles that matched up really well uh, with our mission, and actually we checked all of the boxes, we thought that was really important. And the other piece that's really important is that this truly is a citywide project. This is a heat map that's based on the visitors that we have to date at Yonaguana Garden. We've experienced in our first year 500,000 visitors. 84% of them are from San Antonio. If you look at the heat map, all city council districts have visited the park. Um, you can see there's even some areas outside of the, the, the city council districts that have visited the park. So this truly is the place where San Antonio meets. And if you look at the opportunity we have going forward for a nine acre park that's bordered by five and a half acres of developable land, you see how immense and how incredible situated this site is. Uh, given to the east is the convention center and the river walk. To the west, you have La Villita, and then down south will actually connect to Yanaguana Garden. So it really forms a crucial entry point uh, that actually a block and a half to the north is Alamo Plaza, so really a, a great location. We've talked about the cost before. Uh, I wanted to highlight two things. One was that as a signature urban park, we're actually half of the average cost of signature urban parks throughout the nation. And the second thing I want to point out is that this is the right size for San Antonio. So when you look at a park at this size, this magnitude, with this location, to truly be transformative, we need $59 million to build this park. What we're, the way we're approaching it is that the bond would create $21 million. So about a third of the park cost would come from the 2017 bond. Another third actually comes from us leveraging P3 revenues. So public-private partnership developer revenues, we will leverage that to pay for a third. And then the other third, we're looking at other funding sources. These include tax increment refinancing zone, a state reimbursement project, and, phil and philanthropy. So in total, taking that $21 million, we're looking at leverage of nine times the, uh, that money when you total what that private investment could really bring in addition to uh, what, this, what, what the bond could bring. P3s is public-private partnerships. 
Uh, we see that as, uh, as a deal that we're close to inking. Uh, it would be worth about $165 million, and it will include uh, 385 <coughs> residential units, including workforce housing. Uh, it includes a, a, an office, hotel, local retail and restaurant, and over 600 public parking spaces. One of the other points of leverage that we like to point out is having tenants, having local businesses actually located within the park. And what we've done successfully in phase one is we've brought Paleteria San Antonio, which is a, a husband and wife company, uh, to sell their uh, frozen popsicles. Uh, we also have the Indigo's Makers Collective, which is a pop-up shop that's currently selling uh, handmade dresses and other uh, retail apparel. And then coming soon, we have a series of restaurants Consapos Cocina and Bar, Commonwealth Coffee and Bakery, and Doe Pizzeria. We also have events and, act and activations, and that provides even more opportunities for locals to get involved. For instance, we have uh, a mix of health and wellness opportunities. We have the gentleman from Rotin Rotango speak last time. Uh, we have a lot of food opportunities, so food trucks like Box Street Social, vendors like Frank Hot Dogs. And then we have a ton of art and culture, so through our collaboration with Magic Theater and our other tenants like the Instituto Cultural de Mexico or UNAM. Uh, just in closing, I really wanted to encourage y'all to go there. We have a first Friday event this Friday, and on Saturday we have the Southtown Cinema. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gonzalez. Next up, we have Larry Clark from District 1. He'll be speaking on Maverick Park. After Larry, we'll have Fred Gonzalez. Uh, we'll be uh, speaking with the group, and then Joe Calvert will also be speaking with the group. First, I want to thank the committee for being here tonight. It's very important work. I appreciate you all very much. Um, my name is Larry Clark, and uh, I live, work, and play in District 1. And I'm here about Maverick Park tonight, though I can talk about a lot of the parks that we've talked about tonight. Um, parks are absolutely essential to quality of life downtown. So we're just talked about a large park. I'm talking about a very small park on Lower Broadway. We have one park, Maverick Park, that will serve now over 5,000 new residents in the next two years. Uh, it's an historic park. It's near the San Antonio Museum of Art. It's in the Broadway Cultural Corridor. And though we need a lot more parks in our city, this park needs some upgrades and uh, really needs to better serve those future tenants and the residents that are coming in. We formed Friends of Maverick Park about 12 years ago, and we decided to relocate our office downtown. And recently, we've developed master plans and conceptual plans for the park that support this live, work, and play concept. We want to see those activities downtown. Um, I've scratched through a million remarks that I had here, but I'm going to just cut to the chase and say that we have strong financial commitments from local property owners with private funds to substantially increase the budgeted amounts for this. We'd like to have you consider increasing the amount from Maverick Park to $250,000. Uh, this would provide us with a shovel-ready project that's going to be implemented immediately upon passage of this bond. Again, in the interest of taking just a little more time, I want to thank all of you for all of your good work on this committee and uh, to help uh, contribute to the health of our city. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Maverick Park is part of the downtown park package that is part of staff. Thank you, Mike. Next up, we have Fred Gonzalez, who will be speaking on Normal Park, District 5. After Fred, and Fred is part of the group. After Fred, we'll have Joe Calvert, who is part of the group, and then Roberto Ryan. My name is Bill. <coughs> My name is Bill Altman. I'm president of the San Antonio Senior Softball League. I'm speaking in favor of the Normal Park Softball Complex in District Five. We have it. All right. Thank you. Uh, just to. Give you a little information about senior softball. It happens to be the largest, fastest growing sport of choice for seniors nationwide. There's about 1.5 million seniors now that are playing senior softball. There are 40 different cities that sponsor senior softball tournaments. I just came back from Las Vegas and we had uh, the world championships there that were 
560 teams, 10,000 players and families attended. There were four different different countries, including China, Japan, uh, Hawaii, which is not a country, um, and the United States and Canada were all represented. So it's a huge sport nationwide. Now locally, we also have the largest senior softball league in the country. It's called San Antonio Senior Softball League, SASSL. We have over 700 seniors playing, female and male, playing every week at Normal, nine months out of the year. We expect within the next two years to five years, we'll have over a thousand seniors playing senior softball. I notice a lot of people here are eligible here. You're welcome to come out and play with us. Well, they, you can go back. Go back. Okay, what we're proposing is right now, senior, uh, we're, we're playing senior softball at Normal Park, which happens to be located in District 5. Seniors come from every single one of these districts to play in our league. They also come from every single surrounding town to play in our league. And as I said, we have over 700 active participants right now. Uh, we were entered into a contract in 2009 to utilize the normal uh, facility. At that time, there were two fields uh, that were not acceptable fields for any kind of sport. Uh, we put money into it. The Parks Department cooperated. We made two of these fields, the two on the left, uh, regulation senior softball fields. Our proposal is to take Normal and make it into a Class A first class facility by adding two more fields. Uh, the field over next to the two fields on the left is already a, a youth uh, softball field. It's not in very good condition. Uh, we're going to uh, propose to completely renovate that. And the field further over is going to be a new field, a fourth field, which will be a combined senior softball and soccer field. And we don't intend to use it for senior softball uh, most of the time except for tournaments. That will be primarily used for the youth to, to do your soccer. So that's our proposal. Uh, the shocker is that we were allocated only $650,000 to do this project. Uh, we brought in firms, <coughs> two very prestigious firms, Overland Partners, which is an architectural firm, and, and Bartlett Cock, which is a big construction company. They put together a 22-page plan, which, is, which you see some of the plan up there. The plan we figure it's going to cost about $3 million to complete. As I said, we were only authorized $650,000, so we're asking this committee, because we are a city project, and when we draw from all over, we're asking us to up our, our allocation to $3 million so we complete the project. I'll show you a couple of the architectural renderings. Uh, this is the entrance of the park, and the next one, is an architectural rendering of what the park will look like once it's completed. It will be a first class facility, something San Antonio can be very proud of. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, one, of the, one of the projects in the, in the plan is to renovate a restroom. We have a very poor restroom, uh, which is well, I can't, I can't explain it uh, right now, but there is a, a restaurant that needs to be replaced. Thank you very much, Mr. Hall. Thanks, sir. So, uh, for members, uh, we do have 650000 in for Normal Park, but not necessarily for that scope. So what we've done is added to the unfunded list here, you'll see that Normal Senior Softball League, uh, $250 million. Thank you, Mike. So, so just to clarify, what's on the accepted project list 
it is not for the senior softball. That's right. It's for the park in general, and then we would work to see what that scope ends up being in credit spent. It's not specifically for the senior softball. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next up, we have Joe Calvert um, from District 1. He'll be speaking uh, for Ryder Ridge Park as a group. Uh, after Joe, we'll have Roberto Anguiano and then uh, Elaine Ortiz, who is also a group. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Bonnie Mini, for all the work that you do. My name is Joe Calvert, and uh, I have the honor of serving as president of the Ryder Ridge Park Conservancy. Um, this is a dedicated group of people who are uh, committed to, uh, to the park and it is our mission to be uh, uh, advocates for and stewards of Bracken Ridge Park. However, even though Bracken Ridge Park is a well-loved park, we are in danger as a community of failing to be good stewards of one of the most historically significant municipal parks in the country. Our good friend Charles Bernbaugh, of the, who is CEO of the Cultural Landscape Foundation in Washington, D.C., has said that Brackenridge Park is the most significant municipal park in the country. Now think about that. The most significant, the most culturally significant park in the country. That's, that's an amazing asset for San Antonio to have, and we, uh, we need to, to make sure that that asset is well cared for. The um, condition of the river channel walls and historic structures that have been mentioned before by uh, uh, some of the other uh, folks who got up and, uh, to speak is not only an aesthetic issue, but is increasingly becoming a safety concern. As you can see, this is not under construction. This, these, are, these are just holding up the walls. They are literally falling down. These are historic walls from uh, the Depression era, and uh, if those walls go, uh, it's going to be a problem. Uh, those big trees that line the, the bank there may come down with them. So this is, this is really uh, a serious issue. Fortunately, the city staff recognized the need to stabilize this infrastructure and allocated $7.75 million for the bond. Although a complete renewal and restoration of the park is going to take decades of committed uh, and focused uh, work and it could cost up to $200 million. However, we must address this immediate need and the deferred maintenance can no longer be ignored. I'm going to skip on through a few of these. <laughs> this building here in the background is the uh, old pump house number one that we've been talking about. This is uh, from Lambert Beach, a uh, picture uh, probably from the 1940s. The big white thing is a uh, movie screen that they used to show movies on. <laughs> And of course, this is the low water crossing. My wife told me before I came down here that she was driving through the park today that she drove through the low water crossing. Anyone who grew up here remembers driving through it, opening the door and seeing the water pass as you, uh, as you drove through that, that crossing. So bond money will make possible the restoration of these channel walls, the restoration interpretation of the 1776 Spanish colonial up on the board dam in Asikia, which is part of the oldest waterworks, uh, municipal waterworks in the, in the, in the country, or, or excuse me, the oldest uh, water delivery system, and the stabilization of pump house number one. See here's some pictures of the, night, of the 1776 up on the board Asikia. I'm sure you all recognize these areas that have been through the park. And this is part of Wilderness Trails. Again, a picture, great picture of Pump House Number One. So I'm going to turn this now over to one of our board members, uh, Kim Wolf, who's going to talk about Miraflores, which is next to the Upper Board. Hi, I'm Kim Wolf, and I'm in District Two, and I'm working on Miraflores. Um, I'm also on the Japanese Tea Garden Committee for the Friends of the Park. And I strongly urge you to support full funding for Brackenridge Park. Um, my favorite memory of Brackenridge Park was my oldest daughter's birthday party in the Joski Pavilion 16 years ago on a cold and drizzly December day. We had a roaring fire in the fireplace and we had coffee and tamales for the parents and we sugared up the kids and nobody wanted to leave because it's a magical place. We all have great memories of Brackenridge Park. 
Um, I've spent 10 years working uh, at restoring parts of Vita Florida's, which is a very unknown and very uh, underused portion of Brackenridge Park. We call it a niche park, much like the Japanese Tea Garden. It's a niche park within Brackenridge Park, all extremely significant to San Antonio's cultural landscape and cultural heritage. So again, I urge you to commit full bond funding to Brackenridge Park. Thank you. I'm Lynn Bobbitt, and I'm executive director. Oh dear. Conservancy. <laughs> <laughs> One other comment. We are here to also support the parking garage that somebody brought up a little earlier because once you get to the park, you do need to park there, and this is on the side by the zoo. So please consider the full funding for the right <coughs> park in the garage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have. Uh, uh, next up, we have Roberto Anguiano, uh, District 3. He'll be speaking on the Phase 2 YMCA Master Plan. After Roberto, we'll have uh, Elaine Ortiz, uh, part of the group, and then uh, Rachel Brennan. My name is Roberto Anguiano, District 3, and I'm speaking on the YMCA. It's the last time I was here at the last meeting, and I mentioned that uh, we were able to secure about $2.5 million from the uh, 2012 bond. And and we were able to work with the YMCA and we secured another $2.5 million. And we have a $5 million put together and we proceeded to build phase one. And that's what we're talking about. And phase one is under construction right now and it should be completed in April next year. And we also now we need to do phase two. And phase two consists of a swimming pool and a play area. And we were here and we asked for four and a half million dollars to complete that project. So we would like to request that you consider that. Uh, uh, this will be the first ever YMCA built in the South Side, a full service YMCA. Uh, and the location, I don't know if you're all familiar with the Mission Drive site. If you are, that's what we're talking about. And that site is was in a one and a half mile radius, we got about nine neighborhoods. Nine neighborhoods, and some of those neighborhoods already reaching a century year old neighborhoods. And we need to keep sustainability in the area. And the, besides the old neighborhoods we have in the area, we have five low income properties directly across the street from the proposed or where we're building the YMCA. And so we're asking to help us complete this project. We need the help. Uh, uh, if you all know that uh, the health issues in the South Side, we heard a lot of stuff like uh, about health concerns and what have you. But the other day I was uh, picking up a donico from the San Antonio Express, and he says that Bear County, the diabetes rate climbed to one in seven adults. And also, it says here that 71% of the residents are overweight. Mr. Aguilar, yes. uh, if, if we can get those materials from you, uh, that would be good. I, I, I got I to gotta cut you off, sir. I, I, I said if we can get those materials from you, uh, for the committee members, okay, we can good. take them. But I, I, I'm sorry, I need your time uh, right now. Okay, anyway, I, I would ask you to <laughs> consider us Support us and help us complete our project in the South Side. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, members, uh, so phase two of the YMCA is not, that swimming pool is not part of the initial staff recommendations. This is the YMCA that's now under construction now at the Mission Environment site. So phase one is under construction now, and this is in phase two. Is this the public swimming pool or what? This would be a YMCA swimming pool. The only members of the YMCA swimming pool. They have a lot. Of, the YMCA has a lot of programs let's, to for the community as well. Let's uh, let's uh, save that discussion for uh, another committee time. Um, so next up, we have Elaine Ortiz, uh, District Three. Uh, she'll be speaking on Five Diamonds, and Elaine is part of the group. Uh, after Elaine, we'll have Rachel Grimm and then Gail Sides. <coughs> Good 
evening, everyone. I'm Elaine Ortiz. I'm a member of the Five Diamonds Little League Board of Directors in District 3's Stinson Park. Uh, for the health and safety of the 1,800 children who play there, we are asking for paved parking at Five Diamonds to be included on the 2017 bond program. And we were pleasantly surprised to learn that we had been moved into the staff recommended projects. <coughs> Over the course of the 60 years that Five Diamonds has been on the south side, we have maintained the program in some form or fashion there. We now offer baseball and softball programs to boys and girls ages 3 to 16. Five Diamonds is not just a place for Little League. We have supported our community the way a partner can. We host Kinetic Kids who play a spring and fall season with us for the past five years. However, there is no ABA parking. We are home field for St. James School, for Ivy, Idea South Florence, and Brooks Academy. When Harlandale High School built their brand new baseball field, Five Diamonds lent their field to the JV for practice. When youth football teams in our area make playoffs and have no practice field with lights, we lend the outfield for their practices. We do this all for free because we strongly believe in partnering, partnering with our community. We make improvements when, when and where we can uh, between the daily maintenance chores. We add academies on all fields. We replaced all scoreboards on all fields. Through vig vigilant donation seeking, we have been able to obtain big and small items for five diamonds. Among other things, we have obtained picnic tables that were being thrown away, food and pretzel warmers when Verizon Amphitheater was closing, we've uh, obtained artificial turf for batting cages, pitching mounts, and batter's boxes when a football field was replacing their turf. We've gotten planter boxes and when we partnered with Kaboom for a one-day build of the playground. We purchased uh, a field groomer from a company that was going out of business. We've gotten plant donations from Sam's Wholesale Club. We've purchased aluminum bleachers from the Fiesta Commission. We've sought and received donations of bleachers from the local school district. We've even gotten railroad ties from Union Pacific Railroad. We've gotten donations of miscellaneous and discontinued items from Academy of Sports and Outdoors. Donations of, uh, we got a donation of a actual storage connex when a company re relocated and left it behind. And of course, we've received uh, donations from Toyota Motor Manufacturing over the course of the past six years. Because we are, were unable to fund a big ticket item like paid parking, we were asking for the bond committee's help. We know that a $1 million project cannot be built on the backs of our blue-collar, hard-working parents. We'd be grateful for any dedication of money to our paved parking project. We're asking for paid parking for the health of the children who play at Five Diamonds in Stinson Park. The dirt and dust picked up by the vehicle aggravates allergies, asthma, and other respiratory problems. We are also asking for paid parking for the safety of the children who play at Five Diamonds in Stinson Park and the other users of the playground. With no designated parking space, adults can park every which way, making parking difficult and creating a safety issue because children are crisscrossing between vehicles to get to their fields. Although, uh, and I did send electronically a, a parking plan that we had put together in 2012, nothing has changed specific to paid parking except maybe the $1 million project uh, price tag. We're uh, asking the committee to commit to any portion of the paid parking project for the 2017 bond program. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. So, committee members of the Stinson Five, uh, Park Five Diamond parking lot uh, is not part of the initial staff recommendations. But I want to make sure I clarify this list. So this, this list, everybody gets on this list. If we spoke up about a project that gets on this list, it's not necessarily a recommendation, but it's just a list of those unfunded projects that, that are currently that the committee needs to consider. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next up, we have Rachel Grimm, <coughs> District 10. She'll be speaking on Hemisphere Civic Park. Uh, after Rachel will be Gail Sider. And then uh, Teresa Ibanez. Good 
evening, and thank you all very much for your time. I won't make the mistake that Omar did about mentioning the little series. Uh, Yana <laughs> Guana Garden celebrated its first anniversary last month. We joined over 500,000 park visitors in thanking you for your kind donation to the Conservancy. Your generosity and thoughtfulness have ensured that Hemisphere has become the place where San Antonio meets. You are making magic happen in our city. I recently received this card in the mail after I made my annual donation to Hemisphere. What I love most is that every donation, no matter how big or how small, receives a handwritten note from the executive director, and not to mention a place on the donor board adjacent to the climbing structures. Over 500,000 park visitors in its first year. That's amazing. And what's even more amazing is that it's only the first phase of what is going to be a world-class city park our city park, but it's going to take more than a small donation that I can manage every year. The bond allocation is needed to help build the vision Hemisphere and the city have. Hemisphere is truly a public-private partnership in every sense. Without the bond money and philanthropy, the vision of phase two will not be achieved. I cannot wait to see what the numbers of visitors will be for phase two. And with the help from the allocation of city bond, the numbers will skyrocket. As former Mayor Phil Hardberger said tonight, you don't finish a world-class park three-fourths of the way through. Please help him as first their vision. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, the Cubs are winning 4-1 at the top of the fifth. Uh, next up is uh, Gail Sider, District 2. Uh, she will be speaking on is this for Sam Houston ISD? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, joint partnership. After Dale, we'll meet Teresa Ibanez, and then a group represented by uh, Lydia Evans. My name is actually Gail Siller, and I'm superintendent of Fort Sam Houston Independent School District. Working with ACOG, we are asking the city of San Antonio to provide support for a new limited access road running from Ritterman Road across John James Park to Winans Road. And right here on the installation. Uh, this is Redmond, and this will be the proposed road through John James Park. Right now, there's only one road, Winans Road, allowing access to school district facilities. We're seriously concerned about the safety of our children, our students, and staff in an emergency requiring evacuation, such as a train derailment off of 35, of on our H35. If Winans Roads was blocked by traffic or other reasons, then they would not, not only would these students and our district employees be endangered, and we have the 1,550 uh, students in the district, but depending upon the time and day of the week, the over 1,200 occupants of Watkins Terrace, which is right in this area here, this is all Watkins Terrace. Many of them are would be warriors. Uh, still receiving treatment at SAMHSA would be seriously impacted, and all the other organizations, including the armory, the two armories, would be impacted because everything has to go through the Winans gate. The only access out is Winans. We sincerely hope that the $2 million cost of this project could be shared between this committee and possibly um, the uh, Roads Committee, Street Roads Committee. Well. Thank you very much, Gail. I mean, just real quick, uh, this one, being a, a public street in a park, uh, this is more suitable for the streets committee versus a park committee. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next up, we have Teresa Ibanez, and she'll be speaking on Mission Marquee YMCA from District 3. Uh, after Teresa, we'll have uh, Lydia Evans, which is, uh, she'll be part of the group, and then Fernando Figueroa. Good evening. District 3, Teresa Ibanez, President of Mission San Jose Neighborhood Association. Our association is requesting that Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Committee earmark $4.5 million for construction of a swimming pool and sports play fields as part of the plans for Phase 2 in the YMCA Master Plan at the Mission Drive-In um, <coughs> Plaza. The 2012 bond funded uh, phase one with 2.5 million. We want the city to finish the investment they began in 2012. We also want to point out that this project fulfills the goals of SA Tomorrow 
for neighborhoods supporting community health and wellness. On another note, I would like to know uh, why each of the five bond categories have public art monies earmarked. Public art projects should be funded by the hotel tax funds. The $8,494,000 should be used for projects under the five bond categories. In fact, you can use half of that for funding phase two of the Mission Marquee YMCA. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, next up, we have Lydia Evans, uh, District 6, and her group will be speaking on, uh, and you, I'm sure you'll correct me, May, uh, Amber Park. Uh, after Lydia and her group, uh, it'll be Fernando Figueroa, and then Amber Barson. My name is Lydia Evans, and can you hear me okay? Now I'm uh, coming representing uh, our neighborhood, I represent our neighborhood and surrounding areas, seven apartment complexes, and many other residents, families, retired military families, young children, lots of teenagers. Our park is not yet on the <coughs> list, not yet, but we are really hopeful. Um, first of all, in our neighborhood association, uh, I don't know if I said I'm the president, we have been talking with our councilman in District 6, Ray Lopez, and his staff for a number of years about the possibility of a park. For 30 years I've lived in uh, this area. I'm from San Antonio, born here, raised here. We do not have a, a park that uh, young people, old people, retired people can walk to. Uh, my second point here is there is an abandoned county site off Ingram Road at the corner of Babe and Joe Blue Street. It is a few acres on a green area near the Leon Creek Trailhead near the Ingram Mall, which most of you know uh, where that is. There is a Via Bus Transit Center nearby. If we could get this property or a park, it would be ideal since it is near our neighborhood and thousands of other residences in that neighborhood. Um, right now, uh, we've seen some deterioration. A lot of teenagers with very little to do. My son and my daughter love to ride bikes, and so do a lot of other teenagers. We, if we could get a park there and a path down to the trails, that would be wonderful. Keep them busy. Our area is losing green space very quickly. Developers want to build many, I mean many more apartments and buildings. So before all the green space in our area is gone, it is vital, very vital to acquire land for a park, a green space, before it turns into <coughs> asphalt and bricks. So please, uh, committee, please consider putting this potential new park back on the bond project. It would mean a lot to us. And, and to many other people around town, young and old. And believe me, we will use it to full capacity. There are thousands in our area, plus others uh, in nearby areas. So thank you so much for your time. And if there's any questions, I'm ready to take them. No questions? Well, thank you for your time. Committee members, uh, this is not part of the initial staff recommendations, but it does show up under District 6 on the unfunded list for uh, Piper Meadows uh, Homeless Association Park. Thank you, Lydia. And it is on the list, yeah, it's Piper Meadows. Um, next up, we have Fernando Figueroa, District 10. He'll be speaking on the Tricentennial Land Bridge. After Fernando, we'll have Amber Garza and then William Parker. I'm Fernando Figueroa, District 10. Um, I would like to speak on behalf of the Phil Hubberger Park and the Land Bridge. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, buenas noches, damas y caballeros. Gracias por su tiempo. Um, the Tricentennial Land Bridge is an iconic project for the city of San Antonio, um, putting our city in the vanguard of green building and other ecological systems for our nation. This land bridge will connect the Phil Hubberger, currently divided by Worthway Parkway. The land bridge will feature skywalk trails for exercising, hiking, and nature watching. It will also allow continuation for the popular Salado Creek Trail. 
This unique project will feature large trees and natural habitats for local wildlife and the promotion of our ecosystem. It's also one of the few projects that will have public funding committed to the project as well. We know the city staff supports the project, our community supports the project, uh, and with the help of the Parks and Bonds Committee, we can have this amazing project in the bath for next year. Vamos a tomar la oportunidad de tomar este tremendo proyecto y ponerlo en frente de la ciudad de San Antonio para hacer algo fantástico. Gracias por su tiempo. Thank you very much.
This is the proposed option B that was voted on by residents in 2008. This is the site of the lot donation. This is an ideal spot for an anchor park at 410 Ingram. Like the Piper Spectre people said, it's a very underserved part of town for parks. <coughs> One last thing I want to say that 96% of the money for parks in District 7 is for existing parks and only 4% for new parks. If we could get a little more share of the pie, we'd appreciate it. So Crystal Hills Park is part of the part of the staff recommendations. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so William Harper, we've had to step out of the room for a second. So William is back with us. Um, uh, again, William Harper, District Two. He'll be speaking on Dawson Park and MLK Plaza, part of the King Plaza. <laughs> My name is William Hopper. I'm here to speak to the Chapter 19 Neighborhood Association. I have two projects at Dawson Park. Dawson Park was built in the late 1800s, and in 1929, when Dam, the Dr. Charles Lindbergh, and who was an aviator, had died in the brain birth, and he all over the The first black aviator in San Antonio also died, and it was Dawson. What was then renamed the Dawson Park. In 1968, around 1968, the advocated for it, and the name was changed to Dawson Park. Right now, we're asking about $750,000 for all kinds of renovations. The park has been had no major, no major work done on it for years. It's time that something be done to it so that this black legacy can be upheld. The second part, Oh, sorry. I need lighting, wall space, I need a gym going to be renovated, and also the parking space. The second project is a model of the King Plaza, not the park, Plaza. It extends from uh, Blue Bonnet Avenue, a long stretch, to a long street. The main part where the statue of Martin Luther King is, it's uh, where most of the work is done. But the landscape all around, that's supposed to be a part of the park. It is kept up at times, but most of the time it's not. We're asking six hundred fifty thousand dollars for renovations. Remember that Martin Luther King, in a parade, is the largest parade in San Antonio. It's the largest parade in the world. That's another black legacy we need to keep on the map. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin. Hey, members. So uh, we've added those to the unfunded list uh, based on the last. Maybe at Dawson Park and the one with the Park. So the plan is not a park. Right, that's right. But it's not at Elmwood Park. It's at Elmwood Park. It's at Elmwood Park. It's at Elmwood Park. There, but the uh, Cubs scored again. So they're up 5 1, bottom of the fifth. Thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Noel Monza, the president and CEO for the San Antonio Parks Foundation. I don't have a lot of time. Uh, I didn't want to start my own clock, but. Uh, an effort of not being booed by my comrades over here, I will just skip to the point and say, former Mayor Harburger mentioned world class, that's the thing that makes us world class as a people. Uh, the people, whether it's celebrating our spurs or other things, I think that drives what San Antonio truly means to those around the country and around the world. Our parks are a big part of that. Um, therefore, at the San Antonio Parks Foundation, we really are advocating for and behind um, the projects and the enhancements as recommended by the city staff. That's all projects because they've, they've gone through a lot of work and they've been in these projects uh, for good reason. Uh, namely speaking though, world-class projects and efforts, the Japanese tea gardens, I'd say Breckenridge Park and the zoo parking lot, which is a huge, tremendous deal for the city of San Antonio. Harburger Park and finishing that project. Hemisphere Park, Maverick Dog Park, which is part of the dog park, pack, downtown package, Woodlawn Lake Park, McAllister Park, and Lockwood and Dignity Woody Hill, and I do want to highlight the fact that uh, they were not included on the leveraged resources information sheet that was passed out in a memo, and I think they've done a tremendous job utilizing volunteers and uh, amassing, I think, almost $300,000 or over uh, leveraged funds already, and this is a group of volunteers that have come together, uh, a lot of public engagement in that project, so as you all consider, please keep them uh, in your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Noel. Uh, next up, we have Harry Houston.
District 2. Uh, we'll be speaking on Hay Street Bridge and Pittman Sullivan Park after Barry will be Mary Fisher. Uh, Mr. Miller, I'm apologizing for the confusion a little bit earlier. I uh, came up with Betty uh, just to concede my time uh, to her in case she needed it. It's the first time that I've been acting as uh, Betty's wingman. She hasn't needed more time. So. <laughs> uh, I'm here first to talk about uh, Pippin Sullivan Park. I'm a resident of Denver Heights District 2, and we have had a problem there for years, which is the flooding of center field. Um, basically, keeping with the baseball theme this evening, um, where uh, the children who use that park for football, soccer, uh, as well as baseball, got muddy knees for weeks after uh, a rainfall. Uh, the, at least muddy ankles, and uh, for at, at least the first week, uh, we uh, have a lake there. Uh, it becomes a swamp after the second week or so. Uh, so we have, in addition to the recreational problem, a public public health problem uh, there because uh, it breeds mosquitoes. Uh, we have neighbors who have talked about uh, mosquito worms, uh, uh, Zika, and uh, other other things uh, related to that. Uh, I'm hoping that the, the 550 thousand dollars that Mr. Frisbee has referred to can be devoted. I know some of it's designated for lighting, but, but uh, there is a need for uh, drainage culverts and, and uh, uh, some re-engineering of, of that center field, left field area park. Now, uh, well, I don't have time for my second half, uh, but uh, Pay Street Bridge needs public support. It is public space and we would like to see the city at least develop parking there an open space around the bridge. Thank you, Mr. Houston. So, Rick, the Hay Street Bridge uh, park area is not part of the uh, staff recommendations that were initially made. Uh, we do have on the, this new list of unfunded projects the Pitt and Sullivan uh, Park project. Shall I Thank you, Mike. Uh, next up is Mary Fisher. Uh, she'll be speaking uh, regarding uh, Brighton Ridge Park Conservancy. Uh, Mary, are you in the house? And you all noticed, not only did you all one name that time, didn't you? No, no I know it's not. Uh, so you have time to make a baseball game. Uh, that is all our citizens to be heard for tonight. So, yeah. I will, I'll, I'm, going to, I'm going to take three questions from the committee. Remember that we have two meetings after this half committee work. So I'm going to go with Joanna, Grace, and then, okay, and, and then Richard. So Joanna, Grace, and then Richard. So for the district in general, like the district park packages, like for example, District 5, is it possible for us to get an itemized uh, a list of what is going to be contributed to each park? This is kind of a vague explanation. Right, so the, way, the reason we put these together is that typically there's smaller parks that are in fairly close proximity to each other. And then we get, uh, once the voters approve it, we get with the community and the design firm, and we just have a discussion on uh, what, are, what are the elements for each park. So we don't, uh, for that reason, we don't say it's going to be this much per park. It's, okay. a good it's much more efficient and cost effective. Okay. Chris? Um, could you send us? The acreage on each of these parks, please, because I have to be Sure, we have that. Sure, send it out. And maybe Ken, you know, the ones that are lumping together, but only might be Did you break those out? Sure, and the groups will break out into one. Okay. Richard, Richard, did you have a question? Are you good? Um, if not, no force. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forgot. I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. um, it's, is it possible for us to get um, additional um, literature or material with regards to some of the presentations that went on today, other than what we have in the, the, the uh, You want to get into yeah. my My Yeah, what I was asking is, is it possible for us to get some of the presentations that went on today? I think that's possible, yeah. We'll get the, like the videos and all that, and these links to those videos. Um, right. Maybe we're set. And the phone. Okay. 